We're here with David Peterson, creator of Mouse Guard. Thanks a lot for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. So I was reading online that Mouse Guard actually started out as kind of an anthropology um, comic, is that right? Where you were trying to decide sort of what it would be like with mice and other creatures in the wild, sort of more realistic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I basically I had an idea in high school that was more like Disney's Robin Hood, where the animals were even more human body proportions with animal heads and characteristics. Um, and it just slowly started disseminating itself into becoming more like, um, at first more like Wind in the Willows, and then more like uh, Aesop's Fables, where you actually had the animals as animals. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of at that stage where I thought, well, what's the biggest thing and what's the smallest thing that I would include in this world, mice being the smallest? Um, but that created a huge issue at first of like, well, how would they, uh, how would they survive? when I've got all these other characters that would be predators to them that they'd never be able to interact. So I started developing the mouse society, the mouse culture, the mouse world, and realized that, that was the heart of the story. Mm -hmm. That was where um, everything was going to be, you know, that was going to be the heartwarming part. That's what readers would connect with. So all the other animals just kind of became like background fodder rather than characters. Now, you started out as like an illustrator of children's books is that right or that was where you were were sort of leaning before you did this yeah I was leaning that way I mean I, I had wanted to do comics since I was in middle school or high school um, I drew comics with friends mm -hmm. in the in that time but I mean we didn't get anything really accomplished uh, but by the time I was getting into college and and out of high school I, I even though I liked the idea of drawing comics I just knew I probably couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, I liked the idea of doing one single illustration to try to represent a, a, a large volume of text rather than you know, panel by panel by panel. It, it, it sounded more appealing to me. And then also I was looking at what was popular in comics at the time and who was, who was the, you know, the flavor of the month or the flavor of the year. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't draw like that. I tried to draw like what I saw in comics and I couldn't draw like that. I saw work that looked like mine in children's books, but not in comics. So I figured, okay, that's, that's where I need to be. Um, I, I ended up going to a, a college and getting my degree in a school that didn't have any illustration program or uh, we're actually kind of like anti, anti illustration, anti, uh, uh, you know, that's that type of illustrative work. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I got out of school that I had to start building up a new portfolio to try to send off to children's book publishers. And that was when a friend of mine said, I'm going to be setting up at this comic convention. Do you want to join me? Uh -huh. And I had, I had concepts for Mouse Guard, you know, sketches and stuff. And, and it was at that convention that people saw those sketches and said, when's this going to be a book? And there it was. I, you know, I was still trying to get children's book work. I, I, ne I didn't have anything published or anything like that. But that was where I thought I was going because of the nature of my work. And then I kind of stumbled back into comics. Now, your comics are... You know, for anyone who's bought one and tried to bag it and board it, it's, they're they're you know not the typical size and shape of a comic. And I'm looking at your original art here, and it's more or less square. What was your decision to approach it that way and to really you know avoid the the regular comic book sizing and all? Yeah, uh, I've got a great post about this on my blog. Mm -hmm. um, so people who are watching, uh, go to my blog. If you go to mousecar.net and follow the link to David's blog and search like square comic or something like that, you'll probably find it and, and get more information. But, mm -hmm. but essentially, the, the, the convention that I went to, the Motor City Comic Convention in Michigan, was um, everybody and their brother was doing mini comics. And that's mm -hmm. what I thought I was gonna have to start with because of financing. Like, right. it's a cheap way to try to get a book out. Um, but everybody and their brother does it. And what a mini comic is, is a, a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper folded in half. So you get something that's, uh, what is that, five and a half by, by uh, or eight and a half, eight and yeah. half yeah, 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 five and a half by eight and a half. And I just thought, how am I going to get somebody who's walking down the aisle of a convention to, to see my work and want to come over and look at it, you know, from that far away? I have to have a way to make it stand out. And I, thought, I could use um, color or colored papers or things like that, but uh, that's going to drive the price way up for the printing, and then there's no benefit in doing mini-comics. So I started experimenting with using maybe legal paper, uh -huh. which is eleven by or, uh, eight and a half by fourteen, and you end up getting something that's eight and a half by seven. Mm -hmm. uh, I did some some concepts on that size paper and and liked what it did to the the horizontal push of the book. Mm -hmm. And as you've seen, I've I've stumbled a couple times in trying to figure out the dimensions when I'm like calculating. Oh, what's that? What's that folded in half? What's that divided? Um, so I thought when it was time to actually do Mouse Guard, print-on-demand was a viable option. And 
uh, the, the, the print on demand place I went to had uh, custom sizes, no extra charge, is what they said. Wow. So instead of trying to come up with something that was a derivative of a folded paper or whatever, I just thought, I'm going to make it the same dimension this way as this way. Because then when I'm trimming down paper or measuring out things, I only ever have to remember that one number. Right. So the book is 8 by 8. The original pages are 12 by 12. And that's all I have. I don't have to start doing other calculations. Did I see in a recent blog post that you've been do working and doing um, printmaking? Yeah, well, that's what my degree is actually in, is okay. printmaking. It was, it was kind of the way I was, at that school, able to still do some things that were very illustrative, very line-centric, and, and not lose my mind just doing abstract expressionism-type projects. Um, so this is, is more like going back to that, really, for me. But I, I like showing different kinds of craft and mouse guard and different techniques. And I think showing, um, showing history through visual means of the way uh, cultures have communicated is important. And printmaking was an early way of mass distributing the same thing. Because before that, books, like if you were going to have a book or an image, it would actually have to be rewritten, re redrawn or whatever. So printmaking was the first time you could just have an image printed on a plate or on a block and, and transferred and make multiple copies of the same thing. Um, so while it's a discipline that I learned in college, I think for mouse guard it's important because it, it shows a sense of history, a sense of, of how they would communicate. So yeah, I, I had some fun going in and doing a, a, like a wood cut. I did it on some modern materials. It's not, I didn't use wood, I used a, a rubber block. But um, yeah, it was fun to kind of get my hands dirty that way again. So mouse guard's really kind of exploded I mean from from being self-published you know folded and print on demand to now you're what in the fourth volume of it is that right because uh, I I'm working on what is the third volume of the main story arc but because we also did that offshoot the uh, the legends of the guard yes this will be the fourth book that'll be coming out and then you also have the mouse guard game yeah which was what game of the year I think or it, it won role-playing game of the year in 2009 when it came out the the origins award beating out Dungeons and Dragons fourth edition so amazing you know. yeah. I mean I, I've heard a lot of people complain about fourth edition so maybe that's not something to brag about but but just from a name recognition standpoint right. alone the mm -hmm. fact that mouse guard beat d d is like David beating Goliath mm -hmm. it, you just don't expect it so What's next? <laughs> more, 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 more. Uh, it's taken forever for, to, for me to get this Black Axe series done. Um, we introduced Legends, the anthology series, as a way to kind of satiate fans' hunger for, for more Mouse Guard when I was going so slow. So we're doing, I'm finishing up Black Axe, and then we're doing another round of Legends, mm -hmm. uh, which the guest create contributors are already doing their portions of. So. By the time I finish Black Axe, I have about 16 pages worth of interior stuff for Legends mm -hmm. and some covers to do, and then that thing should be pretty well ready to ship out the door, to, at least to the printer. Um, and then I am going to take probably a small break from mice, even though I know it seems like it's been forever, but part of the time when I'm not, you're not getting books out of me, it's because we've been developing the role-playing game, or the role-playing game box set, or um, just various projects like that, or, or Legends. Um, and so even though I know there have been publishing breaks, I've been working and drawing mice since 2004 when this started. Yeah. And I really need to take like three months of not uh, or, or whatever. I haven't decided what the time frame is, but just a certain amount of time where I'm not responsible for any mice. And I'm going to do some other project for that scheduled time. And then I'm coming back to more mouse guard. The, what would be like the fourth main story arc is the, the weasel war that I keep hinting about. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it's, that's the next plan. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time to be with us and continued success. Thank you very much.